This video contains information that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are a viewer and are triggered or shocked by images and need a warning prior to every clip or story being discussed, then please unsubscribe from my channel immediately. My channel covers the harsh reality of even the worst crimes imaginable and is for adults only. For those of you who fit into this category, take this message as your warning and don't watch any further. You know, it actually makes me laugh, too. <laughs> Everybody likes the robot. Come on, who doesn't like the robot? Well, Greg. I don't, I don't like, like the, the robot, Greg. God, I do. <laughs> yeah, well, too bad, you know? I had somebody complaining about... You know, when I, when I said that... Um, let's see. I said JJ isn't biologically related to Tylee and somehow that was offensive because she was a, an adopted person I'm not you know I, I explained to you guys very clearly that I was talking about that he technically is not related by blood to Tylee or I mean to yeah to Tylee or Lori okay it was really obvious <laughs> To anybody with a brain, it was very obvious, and I didn't do it in a way that was mean or anything. So I had to remove that person from the channel because they're in a, they're, it was absolutely, they just kept coming after me and then started attacking. It's just... So if you're reading the comments in the last video, that's what happened there, okay? That's what happened. Insanity everywhere, everybody. Insanity everywhere. Everybody is just such a crybaby at just the littlest thing if it doesn't fit oh, oh how dare he i was adopted too and i was definitely part of the that's not what i was saying i said he had no blood relationship whatsoever okay try to listen a little bit before you start bitching and moaning in the comment section <laughs> it's just it's unreal everybody it's unreal all right so let's get to uh the missing person case here Hold on, I gotta open up the correct uh, file here. I had the wrong one open for some reason. Yeah, Savannah Schneider, she's 23 years old. Let me read the, there's an actual uh, document here I can show you from the police department. And it says the Wichita Police Department is offering a thousand dollar reward for any information that leads to locating missing 23 year old Savannah Schneider of Wichita. The investigation led to a search today of an area south of Hayesville after it was learned Schneider's cell phone last pinged in the Hayesville area. Now we briefly discussed this uh, in the week, during the week last week. Like I don't remember what day, Thursday or Friday, but it was just a real quick mention because there was no information out. Wichita Police Department Detectives, Sedwig, County Sheriff Detectives, WT Mounted Unit, Cadaver Canines, and Art, uh, let's see, and Article Search Canines searched the area. So they searched down in that area. Now apparently, some people say that they even searched the same area. There was a body found, uh, I think this morning. Might have been last uh, yesterday, but I, I, I don't 
Let me look that up. Might have been on the 13th. Today is the 14th. Hey, thanks, Paisley Dreams. <laughs> Facts disturb the deluded tears of joy. Yeah. Here, here's what I ask. If you're going to be somebody that watches true crime, don't get so butthurt about every little thing. Okay, sometimes people don't say something exactly how your um, moral superiority complex version would be. You know, we don't, um, I just talk and I just say the reality of it. I'm not going to nuance it for you so that your feelings aren't hurt, all right? I'm just going to talk. I, I, don't, I don't believe in doing that at all. And if you want to uh, assign all kinds of meaning to a simple comment, that's your fault, not mine. All right. So Schneider was last seen on Sunday, May 31st. So she's been missing for a while. She's uh, visual, visually impaired. I don't know if that means she's literally actually blind. Because when people say impaired, it's the PC word where they used to say somebody was blind. Um, but impaired to me means that maybe she can see something. I don't know for sure, but uh, she could be blind. And it's really... A heartbreaking story her mother and father have died recently and her stepdad so she was basically all alone and you know seeing impaired yeah I think she's seeing impaired yeah well but I know but I think uh, you say that now when people say visually impaired Okay, so she's not completely blind. Are you sure about that, Megan? Like she can actually see some things? No, this was like a, a, a serious visual impairment. It's not a, uh, oh, she just didn't have her glasses. Okay, but she's very severely visually impaired, right? Like she can't. I don't know what it is exactly, but they're literally mentioning that. It's not like, oh, she's farsighted. You know. All right. So if you have any information on this case, it's called 316-267-2111. All right. Now I put all the links that we're going to go over here in the description of the video. Okay. There you go. Uh, Gritty Gret. She's. I think she's the first person that sent me some links on this a, a few days back on the 10th, actually. And... Um, yeah, uh, she just said that she was unable to drive due to her vision problems. Okay, so that's pretty severe at that point. Yeah, it's weird. Like they're like, I'm, "Wow, how come you're cover? Why are you covering this?" Well, because I cover all kinds of cases. I don't just cover one case. You know, I'm not the one hit wonder type that come in and, "Oh yeah, this is a big one," and then start covering it. So I know it's kind of weird that I'm covering one in your your town, but I found it, you know, it's interesting uh, for sure. I think there's some errors here in some of these articles, though, like um, Crime Online right here. The Wichita Police Department and Kansas Bureau of Investigation have issued a statewide endangered person advisory for a missing 23-year-old Kansas woman. This is on June 10th. Savannah Schneider was visually impaired was last seen at her wichita home off 13th street north and mays road on may 31st so i actually found her home right here and again remember her parents are missing so there is somebody in this cul-de-sac here that's sort of her mother mother-like figure okay and this is the house she lived in right here savannah Savannah Schneider, who was visually impaired, was last seen at her Wichita home on, you know, where we just showed it. And then, according to KBI, Schneider got into a lift ride. Now, I don't know if that's reality, though, at this point. On June 1st, but apparently didn't tell her family or friends where she was going. CBS 12 reports that friends and family said Schneider didn't bring an overnight bag with her, and it's something that... She takes with her everywhere, even when she isn't staying away from home. She also left behind her beloved dog. 
Man, I wonder if the dog was, uh, you know, like a an aid dog. A neighbor's security camera, according to ABC 10, captured Snyder sitting on her doorstep before a lift van pulled up into her driveway and picked her up. Okay, so maybe it is a lift vehicle, but it sort of sounds a little different when you hear these interviews coming up in a little bit. Tonight, there is growing concern that 23-year-old Savannah Schneider of Wichita is in danger. Good evening, I'm Deb Barrett. And I'm Craig DeGrelli. Nobody has seen her in about a week. Our Morgan Mobley on the desperate search to find her. Morgan. Yeah, her name is Savannah Schneider. I have two theories here, actually. Or take a look at this picture of her. Actually, yeah, let me, let me, I'm going to play this on my Adobe Premiere here so we can pause it. Because this was pretty interesting. So here's the interview with the mom-like figure and her best friend. Sunday, May 31st, was the last time her neighbor and mother figure heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message and I said, hey, This is K-A-K-E dot com, okay? So she sent a text message. A text message and I said, hey, I'm going to walk the dog. Do you want to join me? And she has always said yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. And I thought, okay, you know, but uh, we have security cameras. Nobody ever came by. See, what's weird about that is, well, it turns out that she probably was already gone at that point. The way it, the way this all plays out, because listen, let's just listen to that again. Let's. Okay, you know, always said yes. Sunday, May 31st, was the last time her neighbor and mother figure heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message and I said, hey, I'm going to walk the dog. Do you want to join me? And she has always said yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. And I thought, okay, you know, but uh, we have security cameras. Nobody ever came by. Schneider's neighbor texted her the next day. Right, I think it's no just answer. a text. My like husband she was... came home and said... Uh, something's not right. Let's go check it out. The couple backed up their security camera to early Monday morning and found this. At 5.09. Uh, so that's 5.09 a.m., everybody. A looked like a van pulled into her driveway. She was sitting on the porch waiting for the van. She got off the porch, got in on the driver's side, and then the van pulled away. Wichita police say the next and That's crazy, last right? time her phone was So that hanging. means when the, when this lady sent the text saying, hey, do you want to walk the dog? She had already, already been picked up like 12 hours before in that van. So it's very possible that those text messages weren't even made by her. Was in Hayesville. They came from her phone, but maybe they weren't made by her. Tuesday night, June 2nd which doesn't add up for Schneider's childhood best friend. Now here's something that I, I was doing on, let me see if I can find this, hold on. I'll play the rest of it here in a minute, but. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Huh. That's, that's weird, I don't know why on the online you can see it, but. Now see right here, there's a uh, a basketball hoop right there in this house. Now, I think I found out exactly where this neighbor's house is. It's right down here, watch this. And I know exactly where that interview's being done. It's being done right inside this little kitchen nook right there, film this direction. And there's the, uh, there's the basketball hoop right there. Right there, and then way down on the road down there, you can see a fire hydrant, and that's actually what you can see right down there. And I think it's in that shot. I can't remember which one it was, but it was really clear. Oh, there it was. Hold on. Right there. Okay. So you see that shot right there? Can you make that? Right down there, there's a fire hydrant, and you can definitely see that that's that fire hydrant. That's the basketball hoop. The garage door matches and everything as well. So they're sitting right there. So now you're kind of wondering. They have a security camera on that house. 
let's see, I wonder. I mean, this street view is from five years ago, so it might not have. Everybody has, way more people today have them, okay? And so down there, um, it, it's filming that way, so if you think about it, you got to go down here, and this is her house right there, so it's not really that far away. It's right there, and it's this house. So look at the vision, the you know, the visual. You can see two here, and they say, they're saying... I don't know how they could see that she was sitting on the porch precisely. You know, like, how do they know she was um, sitting on the porch? Because she's kind of hidden around that. I mean, if you go over here, you can see. See how the wall turns? She would have been sitting on the porch, and it would be hard to make her out from that house right there. Okay? But uh, you definitely could make out. Maybe it was just the timing of how fast she got up that they thought that. No door opened or anything. So the car pulled in here, the van, and then she got in to the driver's side of it, which is weird because that means she probably was a passenger. Maybe it really was an Uber drive because why would she be getting in on the passenger side? I mean, she's not going to be driving. So that means she got in the seat into the door behind where the driver was, right? And I thought, okay, you know, but uh, we have security cameras. Nobody ever came by. Schneider's neighbor texted her the next day. No answer. My husband came home and said, uh, something's not right. Let's go check it out. The couple backed up their security camera to early Monday morning and found this. At 5.09, uh, a looked like a van pulled into her driveway. She was sitting on the porch, waiting for the van. She got off the porch, got in on the driver's side, and then the van pulled away. Wichita police say the next and last time her phone was pinged was in Hayesville, Tuesday night, June 2nd, which doesn't add up for Schneider's childhood best friend. We don't really know who it could be in that area, but it could be someone that she is recently acquainted with. Um, yeah. I, mean, I don't think it was a lift her for some reason. Has a I don't know. Feeling that she's not far away, and now the two closest to her conveying urgency in the search. I believe she's in a very bad situation, but I believe that she is alive. In the past two years, she's lost her mom, dad, and stepdad. I mean, what a horrible! It's just so, so shitty. Feeling alone in the world, she turned to strangers online. I mean, she's visually impaired. Vulnerable. Very, very, very cool. She's 23. How naive she is with people's intentions. Um, and so it just, I've always been afraid that something like that could happen. One final plea to Well, they found a body, with everybody. Bring her home. So just bring her home safe. It's a female body. Her. And I want to point out. See, this is something that was a little concerning to me, what this lady's about to say right here. Watch. Now, the picture that has been shared of her is not how she currently looks. Her hair is now darker and she's lost a significant amount of weight, probably closer to 90 pounds. See, 5'8", 90 pounds. So could she have been depressed, got a ride somewhere, and did something to herself? Okay, I'm just saying that that's a possibility. I, I don't, you know, I don't make, I don't think that that's the greatest possibility. Okay, but, um... It, you got to definitely add that in there when you hear that, right? Like 90 pounds, 5'8". That's, you know, anorexic uh, levels at that point, in my opinion. Okay, so let me go on to the next. Well, let me finish this, see what she said. Other than the 110 that has been reported in her description, if you know anything about where she could be, please call police. Live downtown, Morgan Mobley, Cake News on your side. Yeah. All right. And then these are search parties. It's been almost two weeks since Shannon Schneider went missing, and the search is getting more urgent by the day. As Cake's Morgan Mobley reports, her friends say they can no longer wait around. We are too, thank you. 
Savannah Schneider's sorority sisters are walking the streets of downtown Wichita, handing out these missing posters. We are called to action and called to just search for who she is and really bring that light that it's we It's funny how this girl kind of looks a little bit like her. Love back to our community. Chapter President Abby Faflick never imagined seeing her friend's face on one of these. It's just been a big loss for all of us. You know, we've all been apart anyways, and just not being able to grieve this experience and navigate the unknown of where to even start looking for her in this experience has been really tough. The group has organized a search party. It'll start first thing Saturday morning, beginning at campus high school near Hayesville. The last place Schneider's phone was pinged. We'll start at campus and divide into teams from there. So we have very trusted team leads that each group members will be communicating with so that we are aware of where people are um, and that um, any information that we can find throughout that community or hear about or any sort of leads, we will be sharing those with the police directly after that event. The day long search for Savannah will end right here at Delta Gamma, her sorority house on the WSU campus. In the evening, we'll be hosting a service and vigil for those that love her and just want to connect with one another and remember everything that is so great about Savannah. Her friend. Okay, and then we move on to what's this article here. Tonight, there is growing concern oh, we that were, 23 years. We already saw that one. Okay. And then this is breaking news from yesterday. A body was found near Hayesville this morning, just a few miles away from where a missing Wichita woman's cell phone last pinged. It was confirmed the body is a female. That body was found just after 10 a.m. near a railroad track. Officials say the search team was looking for 23-year-old Savannah Schneider when they found that body. Schneider, she has not been seen yeah, since I don't know May if she 31st, was still in college. At this That's what I was wondering. At 23, was she just a recent graduate? And, uh, you know, those, those were her sorority sisters that, you know, she was just there the year before, and they're looking out for her, perhaps. I don't know. This time it can't confirm if the body is hers. Us, along with the Wichita Police Department, is now investigating this to determine if this is in fact uh, the missing persons or not. Uh, at this time, we can't confirm that because we're still waiting to positively identify this person. Do stay with KSN yes, as we continue Kansas, to yeah. work to gather what other new Wichita details. Is there? Okay, uh, let me move on to this next one. At breaking news tonight from Hayesville, as a body was found earlier this morning, right now investigators have not been able to identify the body, but they do confirm it was a woman. This discovery comes as search crews were out this morning in the area looking for 23-year-old Savannah Schneider, who's been missing for nearly two weeks. Police say her phone last pinged near the area. Ellen Terhune is live in Hayesville, where searchers <clears throat> found the body. <clears throat> I'm out here in Hayesville at these railroad tracks in between Murray. All right, so I think I know where she is right there. Um, so this is where the phone pinged out here, just generally in this area. And this is where the body was found, right on this crazy, you know, if you're walking on the railroad tracks, you think you're in the middle of the woods, but it's not. They actually have street, um, have street view here where you can look. And I think she's standing right here when she's talking. Let's just see if that, yeah, let me just make sure. Yep, I think right to the right of her is going to be this, that, this gravel right here is actually this. And, you know, if you just turn it, you can see it's exactly the spot. And it's, apparently it's about a half mile down this, these tracks here. In Seneca. Now at 10 this morning, police say that a group searching for Savannah Schneider found a body down on the side of the railroad um, in a field and immediately called police. It was about a half mile down the railroad yeah, tracks. Nobody police goes have Wichita. not nobody, identified the body yet. <laughs> like, but like, they can nobody ever goes, ooh, Wichita, Texas. All right. Everybody talks about Wichita, uh, Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean Portland, Maine? 
Uh, give me Confirm it is a woman. Police say they're still working to determine how long the body had been there and whether or not foul play is involved. Police say this area was searched prior to today by Wichita Police and Sedgwick County Sheriff's looking for Savannah Schneider. They say her phone last pinged in this area in Hayesville. The 23-year-old has been missing for nearly two weeks now. She is visually impaired and can't drive. She was last seen at her home in West Wichita. Dozens of friends and family and even strangers were out at 8 this morning searching for her in Hayesville. Police are still talking with the search group that found the body. They say they're thankful for the work the volunteer group did. Even if there's foul play in this or not, we just simply don't know. Right now, all I can tell you this for sure is that we, you know, we have a female uh, body that's been located and that's kind of where we're at right now. It's going to take a while. It's probably going to take it several hours before we get this accomplished to figure out the, who this person was. Okay, well, today's the next Again, day. police have not identified the body, but they do confirm it is a woman. We will continue to keep you updated on this as we may know more tonight. Back to you. You know, and, and you got to say, it is possible it's not her. You know, I mean, there's so many bodies out and around. Remember when uh, Timothy Cunningham went missing in Atlanta? And then during the search for Timothy, uh, they, there four bodies turned up in the city. <laughs> and none of them were him. Okay, uh, that is Atlanta, however. This is a little different uh, situation. So, I mean, I think it's very good odds that it's her. I guess she was found right around down in this area. This is a half mile where this pin is down the tracks. It's kind of, I guess they put the, I mean, what do they have that line of trees for? What visual problem would you have? You know, these people in this field are going to go, oh my God, I saw a train. Yeah, who knows, Sir, uh, serendipity. The thing is, is I think it's possible she got dropped off somewhere out there and just wandered, uh, you know, maybe intentionally trying to do something to herself. Uh, if you see that dramatic weight loss she had, and there was also uh, this post she made, I will always be, mama, uh, be my mama's world and my daddy's stepdaddy's girl. So all he's, she's even she's mentioning all three people that passed away. So she's probably she could be feeling absolutely just horrible. She's lonely. Her vision she doesn't can't really see very well. And I don't know. It's just uh pretty sad. And yet we still do have the fact that she was picked up by a white van in front of her house at 5.30 a.m. on the 31st. And then later in the day, she, uh, that, that same neighbor, the motherly figure neighbor, texted her and said, hey, do you want to walk, uh, go with me when I walk my dog? And she normally says, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this time she said, oh, I'm going somewhere. But see, at that time, that was later in the afternoon. So they checked their surveillance camera and they were like oh well nobody came by they watched all the rest of the evening nobody came by so then they went over to check but then later they went back to their surveillance camera and rewound it and apparently she left at 5 30 in the morning like almost dark outside i mean it probably is still dark what is it still dark outside at 5 30 I, I don't i'm not even close to getting up at that time i am doing my show so late at night that uh <laughs> You know, I go to sleep, go to bed, watch TV, and then go to bed at like 2 and get up at 9 or 10, you know. Yeah, that's crazy. It's so early in the morning like that. And the one friend described her as very gullible. Let's listen to that first interview again. Or the only interview, really, but that first clip. Sunday, May 31st, was the last time her neighbor and mother figure heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message and I said, hey, I'm going to walk the dog. The 31st you join me? of and May. And she has always said yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on something. You're okay. heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message and I said, hey, I'm going to walk the dog. Do you want to join me? And she has always said yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. And I thought, okay, you know. But uh, we have security cameras. Nobody ever came by. 
Schneider's neighbor texted her the next day. No answer. My husband came home and said, uh, something's not right. Let's go check it out. The couple backed up their security camera to early Monday morning and found this. At 5.09. Uh, what am I supposed to be looking at? Oh, it's been confirmed to be somebody else? Wow. Yeah, well, that just proves the theory that there's bodies all over the place out there. Uh, a Isn't it weird, though? The police said that they searched that same area. And um, what does that mean? Damn, I've seen your live. What does that mean? God. And it's not damn. Do I have a, is there water being backed up in my house or something? Looked like a van pulled into her driveway. She was sitting on the porch waiting. Yeah, I just said that. Yeah, so I just read what they said up there, Ivy. Yeah. That's crazy though, right? But there's that's what I was saying. It could I said it might not be hers. You remember Timothy Cunningham? There's bodies all over the place, everybody. So that's great news. So maybe she just left on her own then with somebody. I mean, that's real it's a hell of a lot uh you know, it's a really good news right there, you gotta admit. But not but she's still missing. And there's the strangeness of her sending a text saying, Oh yeah, I'm going out later. Or let's just just listen to this again. Okay. You know. But uh we have security cameras. Nobody ever came by. Schneider's name. Well, what do you mean you think it's hers? I thought they said they confirmed it wasn't her up above Chris G. I mean, if you read the comments above. Oh, you sent me an email? Okay. <laughs> I forgot to look at the look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. <laughs> ah, God. Sorry, guys. I looked above and I saw all these look at, look at, look at. Because this, ha this happens all the time. During the show, breaking news comes out. That's weird. I already saw this video that had this on it. Body found in Minnesota's River identified as missing Wichita woman. That's so weird because I had seen this earlier. I just didn't. I saw this face and I go, okay. You know, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together. But the Kansas Bureau of Investigation has identified the homicide victim. Well, hell, now we've got another case to be covering here. And then you sort of wonder, I mean, you know, Wichita isn't like this massive uh, deal. What was the circumstances around her death? KBI spokesperson Melissa Underwood said Shalon Nicole Gannon was reported missing by the Wichita Police Department on April 11th. Okay. Sheriff deputies, so that would have been, you know, uh, two months prior. Sheriff deputies were called to an area in northeastern Summer County, west of Kansas Turnpike, around 1.30 p.m. Sunday after someone f fishing in the rivers. Well, well, this is a totally different case here. What are you guys talking about? This isn't even the same deal. She was found on a river. This This other person was found on a railroad track. So I guess there's just something going on in Wichita at this point. This is a totally different thing. God, you guys. Jesus. you See what I'm saying? Make sure you know what you're doing before you interrupt and go, Oh, hey, everybody, look, 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 Okay? Yeah, this is a different person, but I'll definitely... Let's take a look at this one. All right. That's why I didn't. I saw this earlier, and it didn't make sense to me. It didn't click because I read the, the thing about the river. You know, and then I. That's why I didn't keep it. Oh man. Thanks, guys. Good stuff, huh? Hey, you guys, get woke. Get woke. <laughs> hey, but it worked. You're you're looking, 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 looking. It worked. Just make sure when you have me look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, it actually is true, okay? <laughs> Man, if I could put you guys in jail, I would. But now, you probably think I'm so mean, so that's where I'm going.
All right, so I think that is going to be her then, okay? I guess it's a, there's a chance it's not, but it's right in the exact spot. And there's three, by, uh, three people missing, huh? Crazy. Yes, all the look at, 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 look at. You got to bail me out now. <laughs> That's right. So mean, Spunky Steph. So mean. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Skiss. How are you feeling today? Yeah, who knows if it's a serial killer or not. I don't know. All right. That's enough to... That'll get me out. It was a it was a minor infraction. It's a minor infraction. <laughs> Renee Folk with the skeleton key. Oh, that's right. Wow. Well, this is the internet. We have different laws. Skeleton key. Yeah. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's... Well, I mean, I'm going to play this again. And just kind of really think about what's, what she's saying here. Yeah, I don't know the age of that one. I'll be checking that one out later. Their figure heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message and I said, but There might be something going on in Wichita. Thanks, Christina Kubacek, Renee Folk, Patricia M., and Miss Gis. Bail. Oh, I thought the, that link was. Hold on a second. Does anybody have that link? It's in the description of the video, I think. Hope you don't see Chad in jail. Hold on, let me see. Oh, there it is, the iPhone link. Here we go. Here's the iPhone link right here. It's weird why iPhones don't seem to have the join button on them. That's why I don't like Apple products. There's always some kind of weird deal going on. Hey, I'm going to walk the dog. Do you want to join me? And she has always said yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. And I thought, I'm waiting on somebody to come by. But why would she say that in a text? I mean, that text sounds pretty natural, not, you know, like it's a little bit weird because it's natural sounding. Hey, thanks, Granny Sue. Um, you know, I'm waiting on somebody. I mean, if you if you were really trying to throw people off, that's a good response because it sounds pretty innocuous. But when you think about it, she tech it's all text, and we know we've been covering enough cases where texts are often used to throw people off, right? And so we have a situation here where she said, hey, do you want to go walk the dogs? And normally she go, goes every single time. But this time she said, no, I'm waiting for somebody to pick me up. Something like that. Let's hear that again. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. I'm waiting on someone to come by. See, that doesn't sound like lift, does it? Like, if that is her, does that sound like lift? I'm waiting on someone to come by. That almost sounds like somebody she's been talking to. Okay, but, but this 
text exchange is way after she actually left. I don't know exact. She didn't say specifically when she asked Savannah when she wanted to go on the, you know, the, the dog walk. We don't know when that was, but I'm sure it was way after 5.30 in the morning. So hours and hours later, there's a response on a text from a phone that isn't anywhere near. You know, you sort of wonder if that's where the phone was pinging when that text was sent. Because it's things like that, texting or if you have location turned on and, or a phone call will set off a ping. If you, you, uh, but even if you don't have location turned on and you send a text, it'll ping in an area. Thanks, Elaine Tolling. And I thought, okay, you know, but um, you guys, is that too quiet for you guys? Let me, I can boost that up quite a bit. Let's see. I'll play it again with, uh, I'll boost it up 10 decibels. So it should be really <laughs> high now. last time her neighbor and mother figure heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the channels on this like that. So now it should be coming out of both your ears equally for those that complain every time. I can only hear it out of one. <laughs> yeah, why not, Dottie? Or Doty, or however you say it. Is that your name? Doty, should I be a member? And I said, hey, I'm going to walk the dog. Do you want to join me? And she has hey, thanks for always showing. said Bye. yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. And I thought, okay, you know. But uh, we have security cameras. Nobody ever came by. Schneider's neighbor texted her the next day. No answer. My husband came home and said, uh, Something's not right. Let's go check it out. The couple backed up their security camera to early Monday morning and found this. At 5.09, uh, a looked like a... How about 5.09? Isn't that pretty dark out at 5.09, not 5.30? It's pretty dark, isn't it? A van pulled into her driveway. She was sitting on the porch waiting for the van. And again, for those of you who just showed up, I'm going to show you again where this is so she lived savannah or lives we could say we don't know if she's not alive but i think that probably is her that they found this is where she lived the parents apparently she was sitting on this porch a van a white van pulled into here and then she got into the pass the driver's side so that means she must have got into the back seat of that vehicle which does sound like somebody that would be picking you up Okay, that's why the text doesn't make any sense how that's written. It's sort of trying to spin away from maybe what it was really about. Like, oh, I'm waiting on somebody to come get me. Well, if you were doing that, you would have got into the driver's side if it was a friend of yours, right? So the, the motherly figure that we're seeing in this interview, she li they live right here. As a matter of fact, that interview is being done right inside this little breakfast nook right there, okay? That breakfast nook is where that interview is being done. You can see in the background the basketball hoop right there and also the fire hydrant way down there. And so that's definitely where it is. And then you look at that and then you back up to her house and you can see why they have a pretty good vantage of her property. They just wouldn't be able to tell. They're so certain she was on the porch uh, but there's no way you could literally see that unless she was sitting maybe right there. Uh, but there's the house, and it, there's their security camera filmed her coming off their porch and then getting into the van right there. Uh, a looked like a van pulled into her driveway. She was sitting on the porch waiting for the van. She got off the porch, got in on the driver's side, 
and then the van pulled away. Wichita police say the next and last time her phone was pinged was in Hayesville Tuesday night, June 2nd, which doesn't add up for Schneider's childhood best friend. We don't really know who it could be in that area, but it could be someone that she is recently acquainted with. Um, which is why we're so concerned. Her friend has a gut feeling that she's not far away, and now the two closest to her conveying urgency in the search. I believe she's in a very bad situation, but I believe that she is alive. In the past two years, she's lost her mom, dad, and stepdad. Feeling alone in the world, she turned to strangers online. I mean, she's so she turned to strangers online. So there we go. We're getting into a sort of a nefarious zone here. Visually impaired. Vulnerable. Very, very, very gullible with how so nice she's she turn, is with turning to strangers online. She's very gullible, vulnerable because she's hearing impaired. People's intentions. Um, and so it just, I've always been afraid that something like that could happen. One final plea to whoever is with her. Bring her home. Just bring her home safe. We love her. We and I want to point out the picture that has been shared of her is not how she currently looks. Her hair is now darker and she's lost a significant amount of weight, probably closer to 90 pounds rather than the 110 that has been reported in her. See, I think that's a significant piece of information there. 90 pounds, 5'8". That's very, very, it's, that's very unhealthy. Um, no matter, don't, don't go, well, that's not true, Grace. Some people, no. 90 pounds and 5'8 is very, way below... Uh, what you should be weighing at that point okay so you sort of wonder what was going on in her mind is it possible she got a ride but here's the thing the thing that's uh, you always have to keep going back to is that the text message doesn't make a lot of sense the one that came back after asking if she wants to go on a on a uh, to walk the dog with her, you know, when the, the motherly figure said, hey, uh, you want to walk the dog? And she said, oh, I got, somebody's coming by to pick me up. Okay. But the thing is, is when that text from motherly figure, that's, she doesn't have, she, her name isn't out there, the, this lady. When that text was sent, it was way after she had already left the house. Oh, come on. Drug deal gone wrong. Yeah, jeez. Oh, man. No. That doesn't even fit any of the boxes we're talking about. I mean, she might have been taking some, but why would you get in the back seat of a van and drive away with the person? No, I think she probably just was stressed out and depressed and probably wasn't eating. Something like that. Come on, you guys. You guys go right to drugs, like immediately. She was already too skinny, right? Like five ten. I mean, five eight one ten is very very thin. You can see pictures of her. Okay, so um, you know, losing another twenty, she might have been on that route to do that, like an eating disorder. Yeah, like uh, Christina Kubitschek just said. <clears throat> And listen, she just lost her mom, her dad, and her stepdad. She basically has nobody. And you can just see that maybe she's depressed. Now, I, you know, <laughs> there's stuff that doesn't add up for her doing something to herself, like I said. I mean, she could have still been alive and sent the text saying, somebody's going to pick me up just to throw off the motherly figure. But... Things don't quite add up for either side at this point. Because she did seem to actually get into the back seat like she was getting a ride. Because she got in on the driver's side. Okay. So I'm going to play this one last time. And I won't interrupt it. Her neighbor and mother figure heard from Savannah Schneider. I sent her a text message and I said, hey, I'm going to walk the dog. Do you want to join me? And she has always said yes, always. And she said, no, I'm waiting on someone to come by. And I thought, okay, you know, but uh, we have security cameras 
Nobody ever came by. Schneider's neighbor texted her the next day. No answer. My husband came home and said, uh, something's not. Thank you, Jay. The shortest name. Doubt drug dealers make 5 a.m. house calls. I doubt it. All right. Let's go check it out. The couple backed up their security camera to early Monday morning and found this. At 5.09, uh, a looked like a van pulled into her driveway. She was sitting on the porch waiting for the van. She got off the porch, got in on the driver's side, and then the van pulled away. Wichita police say the next and last time her phone was pinged was in Hayesville Tuesday night, June 2nd, which doesn't add up for Schneider's childhood best friend. We don't really know who it could be in that area, but it could be someone that she is recently acquainted with, um, which is why we're so concerned. Her friend has a gut feeling that she's not far away, and now the two closest to her conveying urgency in the search. So. I believe she's in a very bad situation, but I believe that she is alive. In the past two years, she's lost her mom, dad, and stepdad. Feeling alone in the world, she turned to strangers online. I mean, she's visually impaired. Vulnerable. Very, very, very gullible with how naive she is with people's intentions. Um, and so it just, I've always been afraid. I don't know. I mean, what Jay said up above, I, I have no way of disproving any of that stuff you know i don't know here's the thing is if it was a drug deal that you're saying wouldn't she it would just it would have been made there she wouldn't have got into the the van and have it drive away okay that's the part that i mean it's just so weird let's say she was taking a lift drive did she actually literally get a lift drive and then that person took them to another place and they've already already investigated that and it's that person who may have done something to her or maybe she the lift drive dropped her off at a specific location and then she was to meet somebody else but then why wouldn't that person just drive over to her house and pick her up i don't know man bizarre story already that something like that could happen one final plea to whoever is with her bring her home just bring her home safe we love her we and I want to point out the picture that has been shared of her is not how she currently looks. Her hair is now darker and she's lost a significant amount of weight, probably closer to 90 pounds rather than the 110 that has been reported in her description. If you know anything about where she could be, please call police. Live downtown, Morgan Mobley, Cake News on your side. Yeah, well, I think that was a good interview that they did because uh, I mean, it's really basically that's it. That's the information. Uh, friends might have some more information, but uh, you know she lives here. The interview was done at a lady at this house right there through into that uh, breakfast nook, filming back this way. The van pulls in here at 5:09, and she gets in it and drives away, and it never comes back. They actually, she, the lady in this house, called her later that very same day and said, "Hey, do you want to go for a dog walk?" And she said, no, somebody's coming to pick me up. Okay, well, she's all, already been gone for hours and hours when that text was made. When this motherly figure that lives in this house texted her to say, hey, do you want to go on the dog walk? That was way later, five hours later. They didn't even, they just miraculously thought, hey, let's rewind the tape. And they rewound it and saw that she'd actually left at 5.30 in the morning. So then you got to wonder... Who in the hell sent that text message? If it was her, then she was setting up a ruse. You know, because she was already gone. So it's a lie, that text message back to the motherly figure, if it was her, right? I don't know. I mean, it seems like... <laughs> who knows? We're going to have to wait killing time. We don't know if she would do that. You know, there's probably people that she knew would be looking for her immediately and be able to take care of the dog. You know, maybe even the neighbor down the street had a key to the house. So it's hard enough that's, you know. Listen, Timothy Cunningham didn't have anybody come check on his dog, and he killed himself, all right? 
So how about this? Why don't we all try to look up some stuff and see if we can find more information throughout the day. And we will probably talk about this a little bit later as well. Okay. But I think that is all that I can provide at this point on this case. I think everyone has a good visual of what's going on. She lived here. This is where the neighbor in the interview was that caught uh, the car, the van coming into the driveway at 5.09 in the morning on May 31st. And her phone pinged down in the Hayesville area. And they have just found a body on these railroad tracks that is a female right in that very same area where her phone had pinged. And apparently they say police had even searched this area already and found nothing. And then all of a sudden, um, some searchers went out there and they found a body here. Okay. So does that mean maybe she was alive for a while? I, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But, um, Sometimes when people say, oh, yeah, we searched, they're, they're, they're just full of crap. Right. Well, one of them we know isn't her. One of them they've identified. Okay. So let's look up, uh, send me, you know, if you want to, maybe send me more links on other Wichita women that are missing recently. And uh, maybe Sunshine... I appreciate. Uh, listen, here, here's the thing, everybody. Thank you all for sending it. Like when you get, when you say, look, 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 and you get something, I appreciate you looking out for me so that I have the current information. I, I'm, I just had to flip you crap back when we realized it wasn't the right person. Yeah, it would be cool to get the license, but that's way too far away to get anything off of that. I basically all you could really see was probably the van pull up and her walk to the car and the timing of it was such that they think she was sitting on the porch. I don't know how they could see her sitting on the porch since the, it's actually around a wall. So you wouldn't be able to see that unless maybe she was sitting on the steps and you could make out part of her feet. And uh, this is what the, it looks like from ground level. Let me show you that before I sign off here. So about a half mile down these tracks on off to the side her body was found. Okay, so I look forward to getting the emails from you guys. Well you'd think they would ID her today, you know. They he said just a couple hours later. They should have a really good idea of her hair color. Um, you know, the size of her body, height. It's just, it'd be absolutely crazy, though, that a body's found in the exact same area that her phone last pinged and she's missing, and then that body turns up to, turns out not to be her. Wouldn't that be strange? Yeah, they might just, yeah, you're right about that. I don't know what you're referring to, uh, Lynn Castle Heights. What's going on? What happened? Did somebody cut you down somewhere? Yeah, I mean, you can discuss somebody's channel who's putting out incorrect false information. Or, you know. It's not really a, uh, you know. I don't do it every day or anything like that, but, yeah. I'm not sure what you're you're getting at, Lynn. I mean, where did that come from? Had we been talking about other channels or or what we're just doing a show please fill me in yeah it's a van a white van you know it's not like a i mean this is pretty big in wichita it does have a lot of people in it but down in this area not not quite as many but where she was picked up you know it's part of wichita up there Oh yeah, Wh which one, Lynn? Which uh, tell me which YouTuber?
Yeah, but I mean, it happens every, you know. I get bashed all the time, mainly because they get hurt when they realize that I'm referring to them when I say they're the kind of people who only cover cases when they're really popular and they jump on board. Now, I guarantee it, if this case right here starts getting national attention, it becomes a big story, those same people, and they'll come right back. I don't even, I've never heard of that one, Lynn. Never heard of that person. That's probably why they're complaining because they want their name out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them say good things, yeah. I mean, everybody can cover any case they want. It's not, a, it's, nobody owns their doing it. It's just kind of gets sad when they never cover any of the random missing persons. It's always the big one, and they'll milk that sucker for weeks. It's incredible. And that's what you got to look out for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Never heard of that one, William. Never heard of it. Oh, mm. well, that's cool. Yeah, good for her. I annoy a lot of people. Uh, fortunately, though, with the information that I'm putting out and the way I figure stuff out is it works. Okay? So if I annoy you or not, what I'm putting out is actually going to be helpful in trying to figure things out. Okay? And if you don't like me, then just don't watch the damn channel. Okay? But I won't be mentioning that person's name because that's probably why they, they're hoping that I'll say who they are because they'll get some subs out of it because I want to go check it out. The shame subbing. Yeah, well, I mean, every once in a while I bring up, you know, different individuals who constantly put out, like, uh, you know, there's a YouTuber that said that uh, my channel has devil worshippers and... Uh, that I, I'm the Coke user in Portland. <laughs> you know, he's an idiot, okay? So, yes, I will be bringing that person up. Yeah. Right, but that, that is kind of a diss anyways, Moon Maid. There's not too much going on. It's too much going on if your brain doesn't isn't able to pick it up. You know what I mean? It's like I'm just showing you stuff on the screen, working through things. Hey, uh, Lynn... Castle Heights, send me a link and give me the time code, okay? I'll check that out for myself just to sh see what's going on here, all right? Really? Is that a reality? How do you know that, Lynn? That's crazy. See you later, Miss Skiss. Hope you feel better. I know it's crazy, right? TC talk, it's it's wild. Yeah, it just never never ends, never ends. All right, Mag. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. See, they bash out of jealousy. And when I bash somebody, it's out of, like, they said something so egregious that I'm going to let you guys know what they said. Yeah, just send me emails if you have other people that are missing from Wichita in the last probably two years. That might be interesting to see. What's going on here? If this is her and it's a homicide, it's uh, this will get crazy really, really quick. Yeah, 
Yeah, Reddit hates me, but uh, Web Sleuth usually is pretty nice to me. Because Reddit does the wild conspiracy shit. And uh, Web Sleuths, they've really put a lot of effort the last few years to kind of maintain and keep to the facts of the case. And so uh, now all of a sudden they like that. Where Reddit is just, you know, anything goes, man. Hey, could this possibly be an alien abduction? Sure, if you believe life exists on other planets, uh, you know, it's one in 75 trillion, but sure, there's a... Yeah. Okay, everybody, uh, I appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, send me an email, uh, if you would there, Lynn, so I can check that out. And uh, that's it, all right? So I am going to, I'll be back on later. If there's any updates on this, we'll continue with this. Um, but I'd like to look into, I'll look at, at it myself, what's going on in Wichita there, and uh, see if we can find anything. It's pretty crazy. I don't know. We have to figure out the circumstances of the other individuals. Were they at home? Did they get a ride with somebody and boom, they go missing? Who knows, all right? So thank you for showing up. I hope you guys got something out of that. And hold on one second. Thank you to... Oh, there goes my dog. Jessica Schubach, Paisley Dreams, Miss Skiss, Patricia M., Renee Folk, Christina Kubacek, Granny Sue became a member, Elaine Tolling became a member, Rochelle Black became a member, Dottie became a member, and little Andy became a member. And thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Thank you all very much. And uh, as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there. And where the hell is my... <laughs> I had it, had it over in the wrong spot, but be safe out there, everybody. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, flag rejecter. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya, on a stretcher. If you try and play me like an old projector, crime sector is my meta. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pop protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a spectre with a vector On his vector, with all respect Just remember how the temple fucking checks ya I have no agenda, I'm the pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work Alright everybody, talk to you Hey Gray, can I, can I say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, yeah, Jesus, go ahead Okay, hey, I'll see you guys later, freaks, and uh, be safe out there.